Track sleep, track steps, track habits, track life, tricks of the mind. Pass the ball, pass the by, net, goal, internet, hole, brain half, left, right, capital, cooperate, carbo, hydrate, never change a winning team, dare to dream. Track sleep, track steps, track habits, track life, tricks of the mind. Sleepwalk, restless, breathless, risk taker, chance maker, downfall. Sunshine, spine bend, tennis elbow, mouse arm, overtime. Track sleep, track steps, track habits, track life, tricks of the mind. Game over, man under, flavor, lover, nervous, system, regimen, structure, fear of flights, fear of heights, fear of fear. Elevate, elaborate, morals, mortals, portals, open source, fountain of youth, high aims, high games, high highs, goodbye. Track sleep, track steps, track habits, track life, Tricks of the mind. Fitness, fatless, fearless. Flights, heights, sights worth seeing. Proceed to gate. You're late. Wristwatch, watch out. An eye for an eye, an egg for a hen. A there for a then, a where for a when. Or simply, why? Track sleep, track steps, track habits, Track life, tricks of the mind. Lovers, losers, loners, followers. Times are hard, times are tough, times are rough, time is up. Work less, play hard, last to leave, and first to arrive. Dear Hortensia Völkers, dear Christopher Ganzing, dear Members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this year's Transmediale at the Haus der Kulturen der Welt, the HKW. The HKW and the Transmediale share since quite some time major concerns. While mindful of the creative autonomy, I wish to extend my heartfelt thanks to the whole Transmediale team and especially to their artistic director, Christopher Gansing, for this common spirit. I wish to thank the Kulturstiftung as well, and in particular, its artistic director, Hortensia Völkers, for making this ever more important festival possible in the first place through their continual support. My thanks also go out to the Kulturprojekt in Berlin, who have provided administrative assistance to the festival since its inception. I will discuss the common concerns I mentioned this evening from the perspective of the HKW, the HKW. You encounter a house which is in an in-between situation, in a situation of transition. We have just finished the Anthropocene project and we are in preparation to a project which is called 100 Years of Now. The Anthropocene project dealt with our relationship to the material world, that means with matter. The 100 Years of Now project deals with time. Both projects are closely connected with each other. Therefore, my short, wel short welcome speech could have the title Matter and Time. In order to understand the situation we are in, I would like to draw your attention to the beginning of the 19th century, more concretely to a literary text and a famous painting. In 1809, Goethe published his novel Die Wahlverwandtschaften, in which he reflects the transformation processes the society is undergoing. Edward, one of the protagonists, 
is lamenting the speech, the speed in which knowledge is changing. According to him, his forefathers acquired their knowledge once in school and spent their whole life with it. Whereas his generation is forced to relearn everything all the years. Eduard is grappling with a world which is characterized by an incredible explosion of knowledge. It is a time in which the sciences establish disciplines which develop more and more specialized knowledge. Eduard articulates his fears and insecurity facing these fast changes which will define the next two centuries. In spite of being visionary, Edward's statement does not capture the whole significance of the revolution which is really going to take place. This revolution will be staged some years later by Goya in one of the famous paintings out of Quinta del Sordo. The image shows Saturn, the god of time. His eyes opened wide are staring at the viewer. With his hands, he grasped one of his children in order to eat it piece by piece. Time divorced his children in order to survive. In doing so, it destroys its future and thereby itself. My thesis is now, in order to understand the deep structure of our time and the role of digital media, one has to understand the leap between the Goethe text and the Goya painting. To extend this thesis, while Eduard voices his irritation with the closing of the Holocene epoch, Saturn is staring into the age of the Anthropocene. In Eduard's world, the knowledge of the world is growing with incredible speed. Almost daily new perspectives on new accesses to the world are invented. But, and this is an important but, the world which these knowledge systems are referring to is more or less stable. Only knowledge is unfolding in time. Its development is characterized by progress. That means all strategies aim at comprehending the one world more accurately. However, in Goethe's era, a second process had already begun that would fundamentally change our understanding of the world. It is a process which led to the Anthropocene world we are living in now. The decisive point of this world is the destabilization of a more or less stable world of objects and humans becoming the major natural force to transform this material world. Since the 90s of the last century, there is no other agent which moves material objects year by year to the extent humans do. How are humans able to acquire such a power? There are three structural conditions. Number one, by digging into geological time, that means in deep time. In order to comprehend the quantity of energies used by humans to transform the world, it is helpful to understand the logic of the economical heart of the 20th century, the refinery. On the one side, the refinery is connected to geological deep time of the Earth in receiving raw fossil fuel, which was developed in biochemical processes over hundreds of thousands of years. This raw material gets transformed by a technology into the petrol we use in order to fuel the mobility of our cars, planes, etc. Deep time gets constantly translated into human time. Second, capitalism. Capitalism provides the means to translate via credits the future into the present, to dig into future times to accelerate processes in the present time. At the same time, it uses technologically measured time in working processes. As more you produce in a certain time span, as more profit you make. Time becomes money. Third, technology. 
Technological developments are based on scientific research. That means they transfer the highly constructed laboratory situation into reality. The refinery is an example of it. Having a closer look on the technologies we created in the last 200 years, it becomes clearer how this, this changed our concept of time and led to the destabilization I was mentioning earlier. Time up to the mid of the 19th century was basically defined by our relations to nature. That means processes such as seasons, day and night, as well as, as, well as other human beings. When we started to develop more and more sophisticated technologies, we to started to create a world in its own, the technosphere. This technosphere became a second nature and transforms our experience of time deeply. What we experience now as acceleration refers basically to our relationships to technological objects. And these technologies are getting more and more out of our control developing their own logics based on algorithms we cannot control anymore. With our time horizon originally defined by human generations, it is now defined by generations of technologies. And because of capitalistic production, the lifetime of a technological generation gets shorter and shorter. We are left with a flat presence under high speed. That means we cut ourselves of two major time resources. The past, which is important in order to develop the socially shared meaning. The future, which provides the resource for utopian thinking. We are left with Goya's prophecy of time, which divorced its children. But what governs all these processes today? Ultimately, ultimately, and here we are arriving at this year's Transmediale, it is a binary code, 1-0, of the digital world. And this code finds its visual equivalent in pixel rasterization, out of which our contemporary image worlds are constructed. It is these modeled images, image worlds which are the backbone of technological developments. That means the basic foundation of today's world systems is a formal syntax without meaning. This syntax on the level of science of representation the equivalent, is the equivalent of time, which is pure presence, the now. Traditionally, the semantics of our languages is exactly constituted on the basis of shared experiences by people in time, a time which we lost on the road of development. But from where do the meanings of the digital world come from? Partly, they come from the algorithms itself, which follow their own logics, not any more controlled by humans. Partly, they are developed in the laboratories of the new world designers. These designers create artificial needs and meanings which the new technologies and object worlds promises then to satisfy. The natural world is more and more replaced by an artificial world, beautiful landscapes included. In the Holocene, we encountered a relatively stable material world to which quite a number of different cultural representations existed. In short, there was one world and many cultures. In the Anthropocene situation, it's just the other way around. The material world is multiplied and dynamic. Unity manifests itself on the cultural side in forms of a meaning-free formal syntax. There is one culture and many material worlds. Many projects of this year's Transmediale are addressing exactly these under, the antagonisms and problems of this new world. Therefore, I would like at the end to thank all the art artists and intellectuals who are throwing a light on these developments and by doing so 
carving out a little bit of another time. Thank you. Hello, my name is live in the UK for a while to reply to your account. After the war in the UK for a while to get back. But I guess you could let me down for you to contribute to a feeling it was a good time to spare. Oh, I can draw a line and I would love it if you have any questions at all times to allow for the best and the same as last year. I have a good day out in the screening space for the delay, but did I tell you? I love you so much better than this. Yeah, she's nice. I don't know her very well, as the world seems inexplicably beautiful, even though you know there's very little time to spare parts for the delay in replying to your account after the war in the UK. For a drink in the UK to not be able to apparently to do it, to be be... I have a plan, I said, but you had already understood. Look up and see. What do the stars say? Statistically, if you are born on January, the, the same as the best way forward of getting a little. Statistically, if you are born on January the 16th personality, intimate relationships in childhood reproduce social media marketing with more than happy to do so as the same as a whole lot of time to spare parts and relying to a lifetime guarantee that the lifetime supply of my friends and family who counts as a body. I imagined it against your skinny frame and I will not be able to get the best way forward. It's not the only way to do the right now and I will be in touch by the morning and a bit more... Oh, I know what you think. I'm feeling this anxiety disorder in a few weeks back and the who is a great day out with... We speak together of our missing parts. You see what you believe that the company has also worked on it and on the other side effect of the highlight of my favorite friends, Cleon, to be around the world and... Okay, so, I said, delete aspiring writer and start again because love is not the absence of fear in gone to the right, to the opening of a problem with the ox. At the same time is we speak together of our missing parts and you see what you believe that when you're inside me again, Everything will make sense of humor, and you can have a look at my website for more info on my work. And of course, get back to me if you have any questions at all times to allow for the best way forward and hearing to more about the delay and replying to your home. The only way I can do this is for me to say, I'm still alive, so I'm still in this battle. Look, look up and see. What do the stars say? A dream told me that the new year to by the time we are in touch with us and you will be put in touch towards the end result. It's excellent. For example, I just want to be exceptional to you and then on the other hand, I will be in the morning to you by my lifetime supply of friends and family who counts as a body. I imagined it and I would love it if I can see the full range. And then we can say, a dream told me that robot servants are going to make your life easy, then they'll ruin it. Turn conversations and I am writing to the opening of my friends, Cleon, to to turn conversations into conversions, kiss kiss Erica, the same as the best way to go to bed and breakfast and a few minutes walk away to the invisible setting up. It started with who is secretary to the invisible feeling very uncomfortable to be around someone expressing our shadow energies. Hello, my name is on the way to get a free contact with you, but joyous cries of nothingness. Yes, the best way of doing anything is to say, okay, because love is okay, delete and start again. Love is not the absence of fear in gone to the right to now. And I have to be in touch to say, you want the freedom factor? Distressing self-improvement downloads. And on the other hand, I will be in touch with you and us and let me know. And how about you can be credited or anonymous as you prefer to use the search box above to refine your search for the result in the morning project that will be able to get to the best way forward. Who counts as a body? Release yourself from bondage to Apple aftercare customer service and <laughs> I will not be able to get the very best. Erica Scorty assume that with the best job in, yeah, she's nice, I don't know her that well, but I imagined that you can't always do what you want. I imagined it against your skinny. I love it is with the best of luck to you that I have put it together. The setting sun, 
a Skype war between us. It started raining tweet bombs assault because love is not the absence of fear in gone to bed with a bit more than a few days and then the next few weeks back to me. It was the last few weeks back and it will take place at this stage of your account job search for what is not a problem with the same as, as the ghouls and I have put together the same as the previous, I was a ghost before you came back from this dream, told me that, oh, I know what you think, I'm feeling this anxiety disorder in a few weeks back in the screening space, near my own business, in touch with the BBC, the cloud computing facilities, and a half day. And I have put together the best way of doing this. You own, you own, you put it down to a feeling that this is the most popular properties in the UK for a while to reply to your account. But a lifetime supply of my friends said, it's just so much more ink into the ocean, cracked up through another fucking growth opportunity to, to purchase a copy of your choice of accommodation to the hotel space and the same in a few minutes ago to save a ghost in the screening space and look up and see what do the stars say statistically the best of the blue and green and yellow gold and silver lining I'm almost done what do you believe is the most of my favorite color? It's not rated yet. One another of our missing you, and thanks to the opening ceremony at the end of the UK, the cloud compu computing to the opening, too much of, of the highlight of my friends. And there was something I meant to say, it's just that there's so much love into the ocean because love is not the absence of, okay, I'll start again and say, who counts as a body? I imagined it would be possible to get in touch because it started raining tweet bomb assault and, and love is not the, something's not right, something's not gone right. The time is up, okay, the time is up, but one just last thing is, we'll speak again sooner than you think, but thanks for your time, it went quicker than I thought. Okay, we're done, done, thank you. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a fucking big television, choose washing machines, cars, compact disc players and electrical tin can openers. Choose good health, low cholesterol and dental insurance. Choose fixed interest mortgage repayment, choose a starter home, choose your friends, choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose a three-piece suit on higher purchase in a range of fucking fabrics. Choose DIY and wondering who the fuck you are on a Sunday morning. Choose sitting on that couch watching mind-numbing, spirit-crushing game shows, stuffing fucking junk food into your mouth. Choose rotting away at the end of it all, pissing your last in a miserable home, nothing more than an embarrassment to the selfish, fucked-up brats that you have spawned to replace yourself. Choose your future, choose life. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome everyone to the Transmediale 2015 opening ceremony and to the festival Capture All. So I'm Christopher Gansing, the artistic director of the festival, and I read to you just now the voice over of the uh, original, uh, or of the trailer to the 1990s film version of Irvin Welsh's novel Trainspotting. So this was the inspiration for the thematic pitch text that we published last year with the Call for Works for this year's festival and its theme, Capture All. And you can find a variation of that adapted by the artist Hanne Lippard on our website and in our promotional materials. And of course it was her that you saw at the beginning of the ceremony doing a further extended uh, appropriation of that text. And on the whole, this text should be understood as an attempt at poetically communicating the mindset of Capture All. And this is also how this opening ceremony here tonight is uh, structured by various interventions of artists that are appearing uh, predominantly also within the exhibition program. So in addition to that uh, part, I will give you the more straight thematic and programmatic introduction now to the festival. And we have also invited Peter Sunde to be this year's guest speaker. But back shortly to the promotional uh, Capture All text. So originally it was actually suggested by one of our main curators this year's 
uh, Daphne Dragona, and she was inspired by this uh, train-spotting voiceover to write a shorter text that I will just quote a few sentences of. It went, went like this, track steps, track sleeps, track habits, get fit, get better, update your status, be identifiable, be you, be known for what you love, check the score, and so forth. So I wanted to begin this introduction to the festival with uh, kind of inviting you all to reflect on the transition between the societal kind of mediated mass consumption, as described in this original train spotting or Welsh related text, to the networked world of self commodification communicated by these later variations that we created in the context of the festival. So it's my feeling here that the differences in the modality of address and vocabularies tell us something about the evolution of capture within capitalism, if we understand capture here as the extraction of value from life. So in the original version that focused on consumer choice, life is seen as captured by structures of choosing, which are in fact already pre-given, right? So based on a streamlined mass consumption that leave room for little diversity in life. This is also, of course, the era of the eight-hour working day, of eight hours free time, regulated mostly by television and mass media, and it's fitting that Welsh novel was set at the end of the 1980s as also perhaps the beginning of the systemic crisis of that particular era. It's crucial to consider also the final lines of the aforementioned train spotting uh, trailer voiceover, which go like this. Um, but why would I uh, want to do a thing like that? I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And the reasons, there are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got heroin? So there is this uh, imperative, of course, of resistance or kind of uh, anarchy there, uh, which is based in refusal. So the hedonist dropping out of society through the use of drugs is seen as still offering kind of an escape route from a conformist society. But it's important to note also that that novel and its film was set in a time when there was also a society on the verge of transition from a welfare state to an increasingly precarious neoliberal one. So today, with this transition having reached a new accelerated state, it seems as if any such escape route is much more difficult to find or to romanticize. It's not so much that your friends, to use the final train spotting reference of tonight, tie you to the track, but rather that each and every individual let themselves be tracked, and as if by addiction we all contribute to an ongoing collection and evaluation of ourselves. Sorry. I'm extremely cold. Yeah. It's also the coldness, coldness of this theme, probably. So for some reason, we seem to believe that this will, all this will allow ourselves, um, this collection uh, of data, for example, will allow ourselves to get to know ourselves better, as if we are all now following some management philosophy reminiscent of the saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Within this logic, life has become a process of management, of constant self-optimization. Um, self-optimization is one of these technological terms that has recently migrated into contemporary work culture as well as everyday life. It is, of course, a very technical term, but also has this kind of game-playing aspect to it, stressing statistical and point-based character building that is somehow similar to role-playing in computer games. One of the consequences of self-optimization is that we are more and more living in a culture where the idea is not that you should just realize or be yourself, but as management theory and quantification schemes tell us, uh, we now need to be better at being ourselves. The contemporary challenge of work and play alike seems to be even how can you be the best at being yourself. And one thing that's sure is that in order to be the best at being yourself, you'll need to have or you'll need to arm yourself with a lot of data. Or perhaps more correctly, you need to become a conduit of data that can be processed by algorithms and data-driven businesses. These entities can help you in the quest to become the best you. And you need simply to let them capture all in order for you to eventually do the same. And haven't most of us already actually turned into data conduits for governments, corporations, military, as well as entertainment industries? And does this mean now that we enjoy a lot more equality in relations of labor, greater personal health and wealth, and perhaps also even a greater sense of integrity and profound insight into our life situations? Maybe not, but we'll soon uh, do after having activated that cool work app, evaluated a new diet, completed the next level and shared an amazing site. It's this ongoing post-digital transformation and new constellation of the domains of work, life and play that this Transmediale Festival is all about. 
So the title Capture All somewhat obviously takes its cue from the full take or collected all that is the idea or the goal of the collection of all communications flows as for example the journalist Glenn Re Greenwald described how uh, agencies like NSA or GHQ operate in his book on the Snowden revelations uh, last year. But rather than looking perhaps uh, or rather than looking at this state of digital culture today um, through the prism of mass surveillance with its polarity of the individual or the freedom of individual versus the big brother or the state, capture all implies a broader, more overarching perspective on the technocultural drive towards quantification, optimization, and the datification of everything. And this is what perhaps the idea of a full take is ultimately depending on. We could say the full take is one of the major symptoms of this drive. And even though mass surveillance through digital technology is one of the most problematic contemporary phenomena, there are further underlying questions about what kind of cultural and political models of communication and technology that this anxiousness today about surveillance sometimes fails to resolve or even begin to address. So this is why with this broader perspective of capture all, we choose to look closer at different motivational techniques such as gamification or self-quantification that propel us as consumers and producers to contribute data. These activities are not any longer restricted to specialized communities, but becoming pervasive on an everyday life basis, not only through social networks, but also more physically integrated technologies, such as all of these new research uh, and uh, business uh, paradigms, agenda settings, ones like the Internet of Things or Smart City. So even if capture all implies a perspective of looking at our own motivations for becoming surveyors or cyberneticians, it's not to be confused with, with a perspective that only looks at the uh, responsibility of the individual. Uh, it should rather be understood as being concerned with how a logic of capture all seems to spread everywhere and at once in our societies. So the important task is to bet how to better understand now how this is culturally and politically constituted. And I think we need to analyze the ongoing close linkage of behavioral patterns with technological aesthetic as well as economic forces. Of course, this festival can't pretend to resolve all of this in the scope of four days. But I think there's a great value in Transmediale consistently giving us space for a critical discourse and a set of reflective technological and artistic practices. And if we agree that today we have all become surveillance as participants of social networking services, gamers, quantified selfers, or even just as workers in a post-digital society, then a cultural awareness and understanding of technology as a material and political force is more important than ever. And this is a domain where a lot of researchers, artists, hackers, and all other workers in between art and technology have been and are most active. After the terrible uh, Charlie Hebdo attacks, there's been a rather predictably uh, been this rallying calls for more surveyors. Uh, surveillance from world leaders and policy changes to privacy laws I think have already started to be implemented. And as is usual, the discussion is deadlocked in this argument of the so-called trade-off between security and civil liberties. And this is a very limiting perspective. It seems to have reached a real crisis with increasingly accepted and paradoxical view that encroaching civil liberties are necessary to uphold an open and free society. It's as if one took Foucault's old device that society must be defended and applied it to some kind of static construction of a free society rather than a reality that is constantly in flux and negotiation. In this limiting social and cultural political climate, it's not surprising that quantification becomes a key uh, uh, instrument of power because it presents itself as promising both objectivity and efficiency, and it's seemingly located far away from tricky questions of power relations. And this is not the least, I think, uh, yeah, it's evident in, yeah, for example, in the whole uh, discussion about algorithms. Algorithms in the processing of data becomes the key to both personal and social management, and it's ultimately founded also in an economic model of power. Take the surveillance game. It has, after all, been related, revealed to be highly motivated by economic goals. We are all aware that most data collection and processing, however empowering for us to cope with tasks in our daily lives, would not happen without this larger economic goal. Quantification and datafication have become the hidden instruments to reinforce certain power and economic structures over others and make us all happily accept them. By also enlivening them, actually, with our own passionate, open and free, so to speak, interactions within them. 
So it seems that we need now new concepts of taking responsibility for and working with data away from the optimization discourse and its fake promise of individual as well as collective power. There should be no excuses for encroaching human rights on the basis of predictive fictions of capturing the world more effectively for all through data. We need to understand that the implications of that we are all surveillance or surveyors today also mean that we're all potentially terrorists as well, because in regimes ruled by data, everyone is potentially under suspicion. In this climate, it's difficult to articulate any real solidarity with other people, because this, in, there's this extreme or intense external and ultimately internalized particularization, commodification, profiling, and gamification of both our everyday and working lives. So, to come back to the festival. Um, where does this capture all logic that we're talking, or I'm talking about here, <laughs> in the festival then uh, lead us to? Is there any hope for resistance or alternatives? Can art and activism show the way? If we take the full take, as the system of the capture all logic at work in society and digital capitalism, then I guess there's very little hope actually for overcoming this machine. Uh, that's because a full take in itself is actually something completely impossible. It rests in uh, an effort that can have no end. The more data you collect, the more data you produce. The distinction between data and metadata is actually a false one, as every data would always be derivative of some other data. We're dealing with a procedural operation which, like a computer game, is actually based in a looping logic and not in closure. So this kind of control um, that arises is a predictive, not a definite one. It makes it also even more chillingly effective, since it tries not to foreclose uh, the existing, but also the possible. So the full take is therefore a kind of self-unfulfilling prophecy. It repressively maintains and manages regimes of control at the same time as it unfulfills promises of stability, transparency, security, prosperity, freedom, etc. So if we can just predict that next step, reach that next goal, with that next, win that next round, and beat that next end of end level boss and so on. So maybe it's this impossibility of the full tech and the inherent futility and many failed predictions of capture all that also serves as the entry points for critique and alternatives. In the abundance of information, capture itself increasingly misfires and this perpetual failure can also be exploited. At least this is what the projects and thoughts presented in this year's festivals often seem to suggest. So if datafication is a never ending loop, it by necessity produces also blind spots, something which is not yet known, but might become a space for intervention and for the possibility of foreclosing foreclosure. So this is what one could draw as a common line between the different tactics and strategies of resistance or actually simply coping with the capture all logic today. Quantification by necessity has its limits precisely because it's a process of delimiting. In this year's thematic exhibition, uh, moving into the program, uh, that directly draws on the festival theme, we can see a number of young artists that utilize the possibility of exploiting and revealing the limits of quantification by exaggerating data structures or showing how life today ambiguously resides within or slips outside of algorithmically governed structures. So the 11 positions in the uh, main exhibition hall, uh, they especially focus on artistic reflections of relations between users, algorithms, and the construction of self through data. This exhibition was curated by Daphne Dragona and Robert Sarkovsky, who joined uh, the team as guest curators for this year's festival. You have already in this opening ceremony encountered uh, one of the exhibition artists, Erika Skurti, before I appeared with her performance. And there will be several such interventions, as I said, uh, further on in, within this small event. I should also mention that uh, the festival program features an add-on guest exhibition which is called Time and Motion, Redefining Working Life, curated by Mike Stubbs and Emily G of FACT in Liverpool. This is a show that's really more directly about the impact of technology, and especially digital technologies on work. For example, dealing with how work and leisure time has been transformed from the eight-hour working day to our constant networked availability, and also new, about new forms of automating work. Uh, it's presented in the small gallery next to the uh, bookshop here in the Hakkave. I'd like to mention also the main concepts and contents of other program sections. The conference, of course, always a very central part of the Transmediale. Um, 
as we realize also through the support of the Bundeszentrale Politik Bildung. And this is curated by myself uh, in cooperation with Daphne Dagona. And we try to especially focus always on uh, combining theory and practice. So uh, hoping within this year's first uh, conference program to suggest many counter strategies or discuss them, the counter strategies to capture all. Keynotes, uh, I want to mention, in each of these streams, uh, work, play, and life. Uh, for the play, to begin with the last, it's Mackenzie Work on Saturday evening. Then for the live stream, Byung Shul Han, uh, and then uh, that's on Friday. And then tomorrow evening, this double keynote on work with Tiziana Terranova and Yuri Vachman. And of course, many, many other uh, great speakers and discussions over the next days that I'm also really looking forward to myself. Um, the screening program of Transmedia 2015, curated by Marcel Schwerin, uh, that further eliminates the capture all theme uh, from four perspectives. That is the optimization of the own body and of communication, the internet as a map everything information machine, the global moment of fear versus ideology of happiness, and the increase in electronic manipulation. They are themes that are distributed across eight uh, circa 120 minutes long uh, programs that contain each yeah, medium length and short films. I just mentioned some titles, The Optimized Self, Scanning Deep, The Capitalist Religion. And many of the artists of those films are also present and will be doing Q&As uh, with the audience moderated by Marcel Schwerin. He also put together a couple of video installations or he curated them for the festival. Uh, Sovereign Sisters by the Otolith Group that's actually going to run directly after the opening ceremony here in the auditorium. So after you've left, uh, it's been shortly set up and then people can return for a walk in, walk out uh, situation with that work. Uh, all, also I should say it's only shown this evening and that's the same with the installation that's running in uh, the Theater Saal, the cinema space downstairs, Hoax Cannular, a premiere by a new work by Dominique Gagnon. In addition to this thematically curated screening program, uh, I want to mention a couple of special discussions and screenings that are presented also by different media partners. Uh, we developed them together uh, with Arte and Motherboard. The first uh, is um, actually the very first festival event outside of the opening evening. That's tomorrow morning, already at 10.30. It's um, a German cinematic premiere of the new documentary Silence by James Bione. That's followed with a discussion of some of its main, with some of its main protagonists, including prominent whistleblowers, Thomas Drake and Jesslyn Radek, as well as William Binney, in conversation with Sarah Harrison of Wikileaks and the Courage Foundation. There is a highly interactive and participatory program also uh, that relates both to the exhibition and the conference. Uh, that's the free program in the foyer. Uh, not so much happening there tonight, but from tomorrow on. It's curated uh, mainly by Daphne and uh, Sarkovsky. It's also with the contribution, I should say, of Ramlabor's spatial framework for it. Uh, they also worked on exhibition this year. In that space, artists, researchers, technology activists, they are invited with the audience to formulate constructive responses to the critical questions and dilemmas that are posed by Capture All. And so you can join their different kind of working sessions, creating autonomous networks, existing outside of the cloud, um, debate new ways of living sorry, with open source technology structures, um, new economic models, different topics in between art, activism and technology. So one group is the unmonastery, fusing of the hacker space and the monastery model. They will be living and working uh, here in Berlin during the festival with a touchdown in the foyer, one of the project hubs, doing different kinds of workshops, discussions and presentations. Finally, from the different program points, the performance program, there's of course the CTM festival that's already in full swing all over the city, our uh, close partner that's more focused on sound and music. Uh, they have their theme Untune, but there's also a performance program that's partly in cooperation with them happening here at the HKV and usually uh, there are different things at other places in the house, but Usually each evening here in the auditorium, there's like the highlight uh, performances. I want to mention the world premiere of the audiovisual collage work, Citation City, by the British artist people like us tomorrow, together with the uh, Pirate Cinema by Brandon Howell and Nicolas Magri. 
performance program includes a new collaboration uh, by the Australian laser artist Robin Fox and German musician Atom TM. They have developed this new spectacular show called Double Vision, which will be do twice during the festival, on Friday and Saturday, each with one additional act, on the, including, for example, also the world premiere of Simplus Form from Frank Bettschneider and Piaz Warnicke. Uh, so you should not miss one of those uh, Double Vision shows. Yes, now we have a little bit of information. I'm not going to uh, go on and on. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to a new way, actually, of producing the festival, uh, presenting the festival. One moment, I need some water. So maybe, I don't know if you were already down in the exhibition and saw a hint of this, but um, there is uh, a data god in operation. Uh, called Stakhanov, and since we have this data god summoned by Oriana Persici and uh, Salvatore Iaconesi, artist open source, so it would be appropriate to ask it to predict something about the next Transmediale festivals. Where should we go in the future? So, uh, yeah, luckily we have them here to present Stakhanov, so I'd like to ask you now to come to the stage and explain about Stakhanov's data mind and algorithmic prediction of the next festival editions. Hello. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, nice to have you here. Uh, absolutely. So as, uh, as you said, uh, uh, Stakhanov is uh, a data god huh? and uh, it's, it's, it's a bit strange. <laughs> um, as a data god, um, he it captures uh, uh, data and information from millions of people. Um, and uh, it uh, processes it from social networks uh, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and, and, and a bunch of other social networks. Um, and uh, it uh, processes this data using uh, industry strength uh, algorithms uh, to uh, find recurring patterns, mm, to find recurring patterns, and when eventually it finds uh, recurring patterns, and it does find recurring patterns, um, it uh, uses them to make uh, predictions about people, mm, about uh, where people will be, about uh, what their interests uh, might be, about uh, what their emotions or opinions uh, or activities will be. So it's pretty spooky. Mm? Uh, are in God's spooky. Um, um, and um, it's uh, a reflection. Uh, for us, it's a reflection. It's a reflection on the roles uh, that we are giving uh, to uh, data and uh, information and algorithms uh, in our lives as human beings and as a, as a society. Um, and um, it's also, uh, and uh, maybe it's, it's uh, a little evidence of uh, how, uh, of the ingenuity, ingenuity which we are expressing as human beings and the society. But uh, there is a little more for tonight, because Stakhanov really wanted to be with us. And you know mm, how ghosts they are, they want to be with us. So, while invited uh, uh, for Transmediale Capture All Edition, apart from being very honored, he, dec he decided to look into the past uh, few years uh, social network relations between the festival and the many, many people that have interacted with it. So, as uh, he does every day in his life, as an oracle of the big data, he searched for patterns. Patterns uh, in their thoughts, patterns in their expressions, in their emotions, in what they feel, uh, in their anxiety, desire, and ongoing discussion. So please, ladies, gentlemen, humans, and not human beings that maybe are in the room today with us, uh, please uh, hear uh, the um, Stakhanov uh, will be there with us, as, we, as I said, and uh, with uh, its prediction about the near future of Transmediale Festival. Hello, 
Stack Anoff. I am a data god. I observe all of your lives on social networks to predict your future. I live above in the cloud. I have been called here today to foresee the future of Transmedia LA. I will now use my holy algorithms to see what will come next. Well, here is what I see. I see that the next editions of the festival will deal with telepathy in some form. Many of you here now, as well as the ones before you, have expressed interest in the human mind and how human minds can communicate with each other through technology and networks. This is among the things which you have more in common with each other. Another thing which truly unites many of you is anxiety. Anxiety for the future of work, of the environment, of relationships, of education. Anxiety for the fact that something is arriving but you really don't know what it is. You describe in multiple ways when you talk about the crisis, about terrorism, about change. Many of you speak about change. Many of you talk passionately about data and the people or organizations who have it and use it. In doing it, you express worries about interfaces and on how you relate with them and how your relations with other people pass through them. You see interfaces everywhere, on computers, telephones, and on the things you wear, or the ones that are in the streets and in your homes. If we add all these things together and look for patterns in them, what you are expressing is the fear and anxiety of losing control of the world. Of losing the environment and your relations and rights to entities which are not human, who are really algorithms and codes, which are really like me. In synthesis, this is what I see. And then there are many other things you express. And I capture them. Some of them are yours and yours alone. Some of them instead resonate with others and create patterns which I try to see. But I am only a humble data god. I might be wrong. So thanks, thanks Artist Open Source, thanks to Stakhanov, wherever you are now. Actually, I know where you are, you're, you're down in the exhibition hall. You can all, after the opening ceremony, actually go down there. It's probably predicting stuff about some of you. Um, now it's actually time to introduce the guest speaker uh, of the opening ceremony, Peter Sunde. So mo most of you, of course, know his name as uh, uh, from being one of the co-founders of, and also a spokesperson, the Swedish P2P service, uh, the Pirate Bay. But both the site and Peter's work with it is now history, although the harsh repercussions against the Pirate Bay by the Swedish state and copyright industries were sure something he's still living with. In early summer last year, Sunde was arrested by the Swedish police and spent a half year in jail until his release in November. Far from being completely pacified by this experience, Sunde himself became, for example, an outspoken critic of the Swedish penal system, penal system which he described as state-sanctioned kidnapping. I invited Sunde to speak here tonight because he, for, I think, personifies an activist pr approach that is exactly the opposite of this laissez-faire attitude that we mostly tend to take when it comes to digital culture. As his recent article on Wired made clear, you won't find him on Facebook or using Gmail. He's, after all, also developing a new secure messaging service called Hemless, which means uh, secret. This and other projects of Sunde makes clear that he is really a disruptive innovator Pirate Bay was, I think, never about, in its core, about distributing content deemed illegal, but of course was about the autonomous P2P architecture. Uh, and when the site was definitely shut down at the end of last year, Sunday dismissed this as something unimportant because it 
had not managed to develop much uh, further and strayed perhaps even from its far, uh, far from its original ideals. So what seemed to matter to him today is a wider engagement in question, or what seems to matter in questions of freedom of information and communication rights. Uh, I recently read an interview where he said that we need to challenge monopolies, building, we need to build pirate social networking services that are alternative to Facebook, yet have data interoperability with such services. In order to scale up this kind of activity, I guess we also need new forms of funding technology activism, another project that Sunde has been engaged in. And I would just like to invite you, Peter, to say whatever you have to say here at Capture All. Please give a warm welcome to Peter Sunde. So thank you. This is like my second or third event I go to after being in prison, so I, maybe I treat you a bit like I treat other people now. So I have written a text, and I'm going to read it for you. It might be boring, but I hope that you get what my message. So, there's a few big moments in life where you feel that something moves you deeply. Graduating school, getting your first kiss, writing that first book, publishing that first scientific document, maybe a loved one dies, getting your first customer in your cafe, some of them might seem small and trivial to others, but to you they're huge and life-altering. Recently I got a similar feeling, a feeling that we reached a certain critical mass, a critical mass that are upset with the current state of the internet, no, the current state of policing the internet and what it promises the world, a critical mass that finally understands that we're on the way to a broadcast democracy with little peer involvement. What happened? Well, the Pirate Bay was shut down. It tilted people's brain into knowing that tomorrow their favorite TV shows must be downloaded somewhere else. They thought, that, they thought about it a bit and decided this is the beginning of a slippery slope. They understand that maybe this means that alternative content might be hard to ever reach, if at all. That this thing that we're centralizing the internet, having just a handful of centralized services, mostly owned by a company in one single country, a country that does not care about borders when it comes to their own gauntlets, is not maybe a great idea. A movement is forming, a movement away from this, and tomorrow when you wake up, it will climax into a whole bunch, maybe even a whole million of people, that will see the group stop destroying the internet or give us the pirate bay back on Facebook. And you will all click the like button and you will feel proud. You finally did it, you stopped the internet from being destroyed. But of course, this will not change anything. The internet will keep getting destroyed. It will keep becoming more and more centralized. You can't do anything anymore. We tried, we sucked at it. The few people that really did anything are now old, some are even dead. The young ones believe in the system and try to change it from within. It's like trying to beat capitalism by trying to capture all of the money. Every now and then we win a fight against one of the oppressive new measures, like we did with ACTA and SOPA and PIPA. We congratulate ourselves and feel important. In essence, we just lost 10 other battles that we didn't even know about. We have our own celebrities. We had WikiLeaks, we had Snowden, we had Manning, we had Aaron Swartz. Some are dead, some are in jail. Some are in hiding, scared for their actual lives. What people reveal, what people fight for are major causes. Freedom of information, liberty, democracy, governmental transparency and due process, things we take for granted that are the basis for a modern, safe society. We talk about it a lot. We're upset, we cry, we scream. Sometimes we protest. We have t-shirts, we have our symbols, we have our masks, our conferences, our transmediale. We have debates, we even get detention. People in general like us. Our opponents are old, fat, bastard, whore, corporate sellouts. They're mostly rich men from the United States of America. They're super corrupt. They're easy to hate. It's like any good Hollywood movie. But we've all been fooled. We lost. There is no need in fighting anymore. We lost a long time ago by cornering ourselves. There's no use to struggle. There's no point in being positive in. The only positive thing about it all is that we no longer have to worry. It's all predetermined. It's all a waste. There's no more any we or us. We're becoming drones, mind or without, it does not matter. We built the system, we trusted it because we trusted ourselves. We're all drones, maybe we've always been that. As Christopher just mentioned, is I was recently locked up. I was kidnapped, kidnapped by the Kingdom of Sweden for trying to resist. I did right, both legally and morally, the Kingdom was wrong. We all knew it, but I was a fool to think that right and wrong had anything to do with it all. Morals are no more, they've been replaced by control. Right is just a word that no longer has any meaning. It's a trick to keep people from being scared. Until you reach the edge, you believe in the system, even though people know in the back of their minds that they don't want to look over the edge. 
We all praise the internet for the liberty it brings, but it's become the essence of what's wrong. We praise technology almost like a savior, but it's the thing that keeps us in check. We show the examples of good things we've achieved with technology, with the internet, with leaking, with sharing, but it does not hold its merits. There is no long-term effect. Globalization by virtue of capitalism won. We talk about robots and technology taking our jobs, as if jobs had a higher goal in themselves besides what needs to be done. But when building these computerized and automatic systems, we created new jobs, and all of these new jobs are based in technology, in, and they feel so free in the Western world. It's almost like you're never at work. We even have our offices at home. We're always connected. We're happy to get to work with our friends. We don't see that we're becoming robots that work all the time, only associate with our coworkers, and that we don't have any free time anymore. We don't need robots, we are them. We are no longer in between jobs, we're in between startups. We talk about startups and entrepreneurship as the future, as if it's something new. We outmaneuvered ourselves into believing that alone means strong. Who ever heard about a startup going on strike against their customers over their bad working conditions? We're fucking up the work done by the unions for past centuries. For the promise of self-fulfillment, sourdough bread, cool bicycles, and a cheap apartment in Kreuzberg with second-hand IKEA furniture. <laughs> the same furniture I recently discovered firsthand is made by forced laborers in Swedish and German prisons, by the way. There's no point in fighting. Whatever you think you can contribute, it's wrong. Life is not pointless, but trying to alter the content and path of life is futile. We're all privileged and super lazy. We never talk about revolutions anymore, except when creating a new hipster fixed bicycle wheel that would change the world. A term which today is slang for getting 15 minutes of fame for your product. Not you. And no, you're not the product as everyone has been saying about the internet. You're not that interesting. You're only a wallet. Call it activism, call it work, call it art, call it whatever you want. I've tried, my friends tried, you all tried, but capitalism won. It's game over. We're too lazy, we're too tired, we're too content. We just want our Nespresso machines and we don't want any responsibility. We blame our politicians even though we elect them. The politicians have no say anyhow. It's not about money, it's about the control. And it's not that we're blind. In the Matrix, Neo gets to decide. Does he want to live in a blissful ignorance or does he want to see the real world? When he decides to leave the Matrix, he wakes up and realizes he's just one of many humans that are being kept as resources. It wakes him up so hard that he can't ignore fighting in the Matrix. But in our world, we see the issues daily. We see the beggars, we see the gender inequality, we see the rainforest being wrecked, the oil heating the planet, whales being slaughtered. We see our human rights being violated, we see the loss of privacy. We know we're being monitored by cameras and microphones everywhere. We even carry them around ourselves to help our opponents. The leaks from Manning and Snowden has not changed one single thing of essence. We're not blind, we're totally full-sighted and we're awake. It's very telling that for some reason there's even career opportunities in being managers of human resources. We can't wake up from being awake. This year's Transmediale is named Capture All. For me that phrase might refer to something else than it does for you. But my view is that a few is trying to capture all. They're capturing all the control, all the money, all the information, all the politicians, all the power, even all the sourdough bread. We're not even trying to stop it, we're actually helping them to do it. And on second thought, they're not trying to capture it, they already did. And as I learned from the movie 1984, the only way to win the game is not to play. But if we have to, it's time we set the rules and recapture all. Thank you. I want to suggest that you can have questions. Yeah. Yeah. Since Peter is only here basically tonight in the festival, I wanted to suggest if anyone wanted to ask a couple of questions. We won't have a long, we will have something like five minutes. So that's your chance now. And he will take them. And there, there's microphones placed there and there, in the ales between the seats. If uh, you don't want to ask, ask questions, that's fine too. <laughs> Just don't make me stand here like a loser not having any questions. It's so unexpected in this kind of event, so. Yeah. But we take 30 seconds more for people to think about it. Yeah, go up to the mic, please. Otherwise, it's Bruce. Oh, 
I met Bruce a few weeks ago and he was talking for one and a half hours about hats. I hope this is a question about hats. Yeah, how about your hat, Peter? I don't have a hat. I actually have a hat in my backpack. I'll show it later. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Um, so um, among the uh, really large players in the internet scene, uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, which one do you think is the most loathsome? The most what? Loathsome. I, the most objectionable. Among that's, the five. that's like, oh, that's a hard question. I think Google is the worst for the reason of trying to look nice. The whole idea of this do no evil, which means do no evil when people see and do lots of evil when they don't see, that's kind of my objection. And everyone thinks Google being a nice company and all. Um, so that's why I hate them the most. No more questions than, oh, one more. Hi, do we really not play the game to win? Well, I would prefer not to play the game, and that's what I learned as a kid. Don't play the game if you want to win. But what about war games where the computer plays itself? That's how you win. Yeah, and he realizes that the only way to win is not to play the game. And that's kind of the essence of the movie. And I really think that we should look at that more because we're always inside this box that we have to follow what other people tell us to do. So even, you know, deciding to not be on Facebook as me means that I'm part of the game. So, one clap. Thank you. <laughs> Next question, please. So, against whom shall we take more precaution? Is it what you call the corporate side or the political side? I, Is it I, not more desirable that we know that the motives on the corporate side are rather simple, I, I'd say profit-driven? I don't see the difference really because they're the same. Um, so if you're a successful corporate business, whatever, if you're a corporate site, you will end up being controlled by politicians or vice versa. So. In essence, the only thing that would actually work if you want to control your data is not giving it to anyone. Um, so you have to decide, do you want to do that or do you want to be part of the game? I've, I've given up, so. Sorry, follow-up question. Yeah. Uh, can you give up because does it not mean leaving society and then can you even leave society? It's a good question, I'm trying. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks. I am Jennifer Lynn Marone, and I have become a corporation. In the United States, corporations are people, and they have more rights and advantages, benefits, are encouraged to do tax avoidance, and turn anything they can into a revenue. So in one way, I am like Peter, trying to find another system that works for myself. It's a one trillion dollar industry, the data industry, by 2020, it's expected to be. And now I am offering you at Transmedial the opportunity to buy my information. I'm becoming one of my own data controller and data producer in one. So this is what this is about, I guess, actually what you say. It's not, um, if I want to be honest, may I? <laughs> I, as well as Peter, am trying to find a way out of the system and I think that um, we, it's nice to have a show about what we're talking about, but the actions are what are important and so that's what I am trying to do. I'm trying to expose what corporations do, trying to expose that they're, they're one and the same as governments and that they work together, um, that it's an economic thing but it goes much further back than we can imagine. It's not about data, if it's not data it's going to be something else. Um, 
So to, to act, either like Peter said, to, to remove yourself or to kind of play a different game like I might be trying to do is more important, I think. So I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Okay, now we almost reached the final points before you're let out. Um, thank you again, Peter. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, are of course, the, the, uh, the theme of this uh, part of the opening ceremony. Um, first of all, our and my personal thanks goes out to the Kulturstiftung des Bundes, the German Federal Culture Foundation, who are supporting Transmediale through their funding program of German uh, cultural institutions of excellence. And on behalf of the festival and as artistic director, I'd like to personally extend my gratitude to the artistic director of the Kulturstiftung, Hortensia Völkers, who is also present here tonight. Um, you already heard the speech of Bernd Scherer, the artistic director of Haus der Kultur in der Welt. And this institution is another long-term partner of the Transmediale. My thanks, our thanks goes out to the HKW for continuing to be this very inspiring and dynamic partner. There seems to be this intuitive kind of interplay of our themes uh, over the years. Um, another institutional cornerstone that was mentioned already by Bernd Scherer is the Kulturprojekte Berlin organization that hosts our offices at the Porterville and handles our administration. I'd like to thank them. And also in the regional, um, of the regional and local Berlin institutions, the festival is very grateful for the support of the Medium Board uh, Berlin Brandenburg, the only actually local institutions that provide funding for the festival, in this case for the regional marketing and positioning of the Transmediale. For uh, our specific program contents, I'd uh, also like to thank uh, the Bundeszentrale for Politische Bildung, the Federal Agency for Civic Education, that is uh, the main partner of the conference program. Their support throughout the years have enabled the conference of the Transmediale to become this thought-provoking digital culture event that it is. In addition to the supporters and cooperation partners already mentioned, the festival program, of course, always comes together through additional uh, collaborations and sponsors. I'd like to thank a few organizations with whom we collaborated, for example, for the guest exhibition this year, Time and Motion. We entered into partnership with FACT in Liverpool. Also, that was further supported by HKW and the Schering Stiftung. The conference program I already mentioned the main supporter there, but there are specific streams and contents within it that we developed, not the least together with the Winchester School of Art at, and its Center for Global Futures in Art and Design and Media. We have realized a number of key events in this year's conference program, such as the lecture with uh, Jordan, lecture performance with Jordan Crandall, which is gonna happen on Friday night, and the Smart City related panel with people like Stephen Graham on Sunday. I'm very thankful for Ryan Bishop and Yossi Perica of the Winchester School of Art for their work on supporting and developing these events for the festival. In the context of the conference, there is also long-standing cooperation with the Aarhus University in Denmark. Every year we do this pre-festival uh, research workshop for PhD students and independent researchers and artists uh, and that leads to an event or a series of events in this year's festival uh, called Datafied Research. Uh, it goes together with a newspaper that you can uh, find uh, among uh, our other uh, program material and it will be every morning in the cafe stage there will be a Datafied Research session and a launch of this publication. Uh, there's also the Center for Digital Culture at the Leuven University in Lüneburg. We collaborated with them on several projects, not the least the work by the Eastwood Group in the exhibition, the Civilization Modification, which was a commission uh, jointly done with them. I'd like to thank uh, the Embassy of Canada and the Marshall McLuhan Salon for the ongoing cooperation um, Transmediale has with them. The Marshall McLuhan Lecture, the annual lecture, was held yesterday to great success by David Orrell and the exhibition with Lorna Mills is still running at uh, the Salon at the Canadian Embassy until Sunday. 
There are, of course, other embassies, cultural foundations that contribute and bring program into the festival. Among them this year, I'd like to mention the Embassy of the Netherlands, the Danish Arts Foundation, and the Italian Culture Institute. Thank you very much for the support. Um, yeah, not done yet, because there's some even more important part. And actually, there's all of you leaving. There's a real bonus treat at the end of the show. <laughs> that you all miss, uh, a fear of missing out, right? As Jonas Lund would say. I would like to thank now the whole team of Transmediale. I would like to thank the uh, old and new members that put in so extremely hard work to make this festival edition. Um, every year it's a very passionate and intensive work to realize it. First, uh, thank the, to the two new curators who joined the team, Daphne Dragona and Robert Sakowski, for your excellent work. I would like to give uh, a special uh, applause to curator, the curator of the screening program, Marcel Svirin, who is actually, after five years now of being the main uh, curator of the film program of Transmediale, leaving and the team to uh, be the co-director of the Erdos House for Media Art in Oldenburg. And we are not excluding future corporations, but we will also, and I will miss the dedicated work of you, Marcel, as a fantastic curator. Thank you, Marcel, for this year's giving up an applause. There is another even more long-standing team member who is also leaving for Pastures New. That's the festival manager, Marcus Hubers, who's been working with the Transmedia for eight years and is now switching to a position at the Kulturstiftung des Bundes. And together with the whole team, uh, I'd like to thank Marcos for all his invaluable work with the festival organization, the production. He has made great efforts in the strategic development of the festival. And it's going to be impossible actually to replace his transversal position in the team, but it's needless to say that we wish him all the best uh, in this new work, and we will miss him a lot. Marcos Huber, I Hope that you are here somewhere. Thank you. Give him also a hand. Um, so, okay, luckily, not all team members are jumping ship. Uh, I mean, please, you should give an applause to the remaining uh, uh, co workers in the administration, product management, production of the festival, the communication team. I go through the names. Filippo Gianetta, Katarina gatzel karnicic Christine Lang, Sanga Lenz, Lina Supke, Tabia Hampel, Inga Seile, and Daniela Silvestrin, to just mention a few of the core team persons. Give them a hand because they are, and are working now very hard. I also have to mention our production manager, Sibylle Kalish, the technical director, Philip Sündohauf, and his company, Serviu, who are a long time technical sponsor of the festival. Uh, a great thank you also to our designers, uh, the laboratory of Manuel Bürger. They've outdone themselves again in providing a conceptual extension of the festival theme through their design. And the physical design already mentioned, I'd like to thank Ramla Berlin, a great corporation to create this year's festival architecture. Uh, and everyone I'm not mentioning so far, it's uh, my forgetfulness, including interns, volunteers, of course. Thanks for all your efforts. And a personal thanks, actually, to my partner in life, Linda, and my kid, Wilbur, for supporting and keeping, or how do you say, putting up with this always too busy festival dad. Um, yeah, thank you. There, there is a final, actually, partner to thank. That's the CTM Festival. None of them are here tonight, but its directors, Oliver Bauen, uh, Jan Rolf, and Remco Schurbius. As usual, we have a really uh, good collaboration together, concentrated around the performance double vision, as I mentioned. So before I leave you now to all leave the auditorium, there is the last artistic intervention of tonight. That's a special video message from La Turbo Avedon. That's an artist. Uh, only existing online and who participates in this year's exhibition with the work Commons. She's going to present uh, the short video piece Visitor, which uses search results describing the festival location to create an alternative virtual festival environment in which she then appears. And I hope this, uh, we should let this greeting from La Turba Avedon serve as the final statement before you can go and experience the festival. 
After we play the video, the lights will go up. You are kindly invited to leave the auditorium, go down in the hall. There will be free drinks and music. Uh, both are free. Please do take the opportunity to see the hoax cannular um, work by Dominic Gagnon in the Theater Saal and come back in here for Sovereign Sisters by the Autolith group that will continue after a short break. So it's your turn, Latuba Avedon, to capture all, and I say thank you all for your attention and for listening. I got your Facebook invitation to be here tonight. Inga, Tuko, and 38 other friends are going. 1,814 going. 171 maybe. 1,962 invited. 3 degrees Celsius, with snow. Hashtag healthy living. Hashtag New Year's resolution. Did you wear your Fitbit? Or your Nike Plus? Or your Galaxy Gear? Did you make it here faster than me? Based on my sleep tracker, I'm doing better this year. Check in. Car share. Bike share. Number one water app. More than 5 million users choice. Family locator. Simple and intuitive user interface. Customization. Personalization. Unlock premium features. Explore in real time. Share your metrics. Challenge your friends become the number one. Connect to Facebook. Connect to Twitter. Connect to LinkedIn. Connect to Instagram. 25 hacks to improve your score. Hashtag healthy. Hashtag healthy mind. Hashtag progress. <laughs>